rather than the way to obtain the, the equations, it's more important the procedure to obtain the, 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 the rather than the, 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 the exact derivation, mathematical derivation of the equations, it's more important the conceptual procedure to obtain these equations. So we will approach that considering, in principle, another problem, which is easier, but also, also uh, uh, shows this, this, kind, this kind of problem, the same similar problem, is what is called the potential vector field. I remember that I also told you once what is a potential vector field. We say that the vector field, so a vector, function of a space and time. Time here doesn't play any, any role, so we could forget about time. A vector field, we say it is potential, if there exists a scalar field, function of the space of time, whose gradient, look, this is a scalar, the gradient of the scalar is just a vector. So the gradient of this scalar uh, field provides the vector. Okay? Then we say that this vector field B is a scalar field, is a vector field. Uh, a potential vector field, sorry, a potential vector field. And this is called the potential fu function. The differentiation of this potential function provides a vector field. So of course, if I invent any continuous vector field and I just take the, 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 the differentiate with respect to all, all the coordinates, the one, two, three, I obtain three components which define the vector field. So the problem of given the vector field, obtain the corresponding, uh, given the potential uh, field, uh, the scalar potential field, obtaining the vector field, then it's trivial, just differentiation. But then we can just state the opposite problem. So is given a certain vector, I invent just three, ve three components, functions of x, y, z, and I said, given this vector, there exists any uh, uh, vector, uh, a scalar field, phi, which is such that gradient of phi provides b, gradient of phi provides b, the response is, again, no. And the reasons are similar to the ones that we saw before. So if we now know v and want to know phi, then such that gradient of phi equals v, then solving the problem component by component, we have three equations. Every vi, component i of v, has to be equal to the dif differential of phi with respect to xi. So we have a, a number of differential equations, first order differential equations, partial differential equations. How many equations? As many as component three. How many unknowns? Phi. So I have more equations than unknowns. So the problem in general <laughs> won't be possible. Is that somehow, sometimes possible? Yes, and probably there are many problems in physics, probably of, and some of them you are familiar with, that request or require that the, uh, the, the vector field comes from, as a, from the potential, from the gradient of a scalar field. So the vector field is a potential vector field. Some of them, I won't mention them. So that's not a trivial issue. It's, it's relatively important, this, and very well known. So how do we find what conditions have to fulfill these invented components of the vector field, bx, by, bz, b1, b2, b3, in order that this problem has a solution? Okay. So the problem is quite simple. Look, what about if we just take these equations and we differentiate all the equations about x uh, with respect to x, y, and z, or x1, x2, x3. That's what is here, right? Of course, uh, if I take these equations, I can differentiate every vi with respect to a j. So take the first derivative of the whole equation, and of course here, I would have the second derivative of phi. How many equations like that can I have? According to that, this is differentiation of every of these vi equations has to be differentiated with x1, x2, x3. So I will have three times three times three, nine equations, okay? Okay, how many, in these nine equations, how many of these second derivatives there will be? Well, let's look at it. 
These are the results between that. I differentiate Bx with respect to x and obtain that. Bx with respect to y and obtain that. Vx with respect to z and obtain that. These for the first component. Now I do for the second component, then I do for the third component. So this is a system of, so to speak, nine equations, partial differential equations, second order partial differential equations, where there are, we can see that there are derivatives with respect of V, first order derivative of V, here, and second order derivative of phi. How many of these second order derivatives of phi are there here? Well, I will have second derivative of phi with respect to x square, which appears here, with respect to y square, which appears here, with respect to z square, which appears here, with respect to xy, which appears here. I would have one here, which would be with respect to yx, which is here. But look, I know, just look at my, at my reservoir, at my, at my uh, store of, of mathematical information, and I know, probably you know too, that there is a problem, a, a theorem, which is the Schwarz theorem, that talks about the symmetry of second partial derivatives. In, in Spanish, it's called uh, igualdad de derivadas cruzadas. Maybe you are familiar with that. So whenever I take a function which is continuous, with continuous derivatives, and I derive this function, which is function of a number of variables, it doesn't matter how many, and I take the second derivative of phi with respect x i at g, for instance, for x2, x4, and I take the derivative of second derivative of x4, x5, the results are the same. So that's the theory, maybe you don't know, you didn't know it, just take it and believe that what I'm saying. That is very quite popular theorem that says the symmetry of second partial derivatives in continuous functions. So, in this system, when I look at the second derivative of phi with respect to xy, and here with respect to yx, in fact, they are not different. They are the same. And that is equal to that, and that is equal to that. So finally, well, the, to the question of what, how many second derivatives of phi that appear here, that appear with respect to x2, y2, z2, xy, I don't put eyx, xz, I don't put zx, because they are the same, different derivatives of that, and yz, I don't put zy. So finally, the point is that there are six different second order derivatives here in nine equations. So for a while, considering that these as unknowns, I could eliminate them because there are six unknowns, one, two, three, four, five, six. No, sorry, one, two, three, and then the three derivative six. Six terms that by combination, by linear combination manipulation of these equations could be eliminated, okay? So look, I haven't done that because you will see that you will know in advance what, what these results are. But theoretically, whenever I have a system of nine equations and I want to eliminate nine different terms, six different terms that I uh, know I want to eliminate from them, by combination, I obtain a number of equations, three, that involve the other terms. So everything except everything that the five derivatives. So I would obtain three, three conditions. Three conditions. Look, these conditions are the following. If this is equal to that, that means that this is equal to that. Is in virtue of the Schwarz theorem, this is equal to that, that means that this is equal to that. And if this is equal to that, that means that this is equal to that. So the final <coughs> three equations that can be eliminated from this system, eliminating the second order derivative of phi are these three equations, which involve only v. v. Phi, there is no phi appearing here. There are derivatives of v that appear here. And these are necessary conditions, necessary conditions for the integration of the system. Okay? Because I'm, sub, I'm assumed that the system is, in, is integrable so that these equations, that these equations here are fulfilled. Okay, that these equations here are fulfilled. So it can be also, sh also shown that they, they are also sufficient conditions. So these three conditions, 
derivative of, look, there is some of cross derivative relations here. Derivative of Vx, which is a function of xyz with respect to x, is equal to derivative of, sorry, sorry with respect to y, in respect it is the equal to derivative of Vi with respect to x. Derivative of Vx with respect to z is equal to Vz with respect to x, and derivative of By with respect to z is equal to derivative of Vz with respect to y. In other words, there is some recurrence here that I can express in that way. By passing the terms to the other side, these are the three, let's to call it compatibility equations, the three mathematical conditions that a given vector field B has to fulfill in order that it can be potential. So that this equation, this partial differential equation, can be integrated. Look, looking at the recurrence of that, in this equation you see that z doesn't appear. So let's call that this equation, name this equation as equation SZ, a co component z of a certain vector. Here, look, y doesn't appear, so let's name it as y, and here x doesn't appear, so let's call it sx. So the compatibility equations, which are this, can be expressed that this vector s, whose components are as x, as y, as z, define it in that way. By the way, these in turn thus can be seen that are the determinant of this symbolic determinant, e1, e2, e3, the, the three derivatives, the three components. So finally, this vector is the rotational, the rotational, so the vector product of nabla and b, the rotational of b. So that's something that you should keep in mind now. The compatibility or integrability equations of a potential vector field is that this vector field that I have invented has rotational equal zero everywhere. That's what that what we call it's irrotational. That's something that will come back when we uh, talk about uh, fluid mechanics. We say that we will say it doesn't anticipate that that condition for a velocity problem to be potential, a velocity field to be potential, is that this velocity field is irrotational. So we say potential and irrotational are equivalent terms. Have zero rotational. If this is fulfilled, then obtaining from that, obtaining phi, could be more or less heavier, more or less heavy, more or less complicated, but it, it's possible. If I don't do it, if because I don't know how, or because I've made a mistake, but it's possible. OK? So recall the procedure we have done. We have realized that the original problem that we faced, the original of solving this dif partial differential equation system, had more uh, knowns than uh, uh, equations than unknowns. So in order to get additional equations, we just differentiate once, in that case one, and by differentiating, we saw that we obtained already more uh, equations than unknowns. So we can eliminate the phi here and obtain some equations just in terms of the B, which are the compatibility conditions.